Uh, my name is Bruce Shaw and I am a, an artist and I think today what we're going to look at is uh, easy marbling. Okay, easy marbling. Uh, this is a this is a process that was uh, I think uh, founded and uh, started in Japan in the 12th century and then it spread through Persia and Turkey and on into Europe. It's basically um, a, a process where the use of marbling inks transferring them onto paper uh, imitates marbling that you would see in rock and rock structures, i.e. marble. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to actually approach it in a very um, easy and quick way. Okay, things that we need. Okay, we're going to need a, a container. Put some water in here. This is just cold water. So we've got about an inch of water in there. But these little links we've got here, it asks us to prime the water first before we can actually begin. So I'm just going to prime this with, oh, let's take any colour, take this colour here. Give them a shake, make sure the pigment and the oil in the container gets used up. Now, if you'll see this, this, hopefully when I drop this in here, you'll see it dissipating in the water. Whoa! Now that was just a, a couple of drops, okay? A lot of the marble inks will just come in small, small uh, containers just like this. But you don't really, need, don't really need a lot, you know, you're really just a couple of drops in each thingy. So a small container like that will go a long way. So. This is just purely priming it, okay? I'm just going to lower that bit of paper in there. That should take... Okay. That was only in there for a couple of seconds, okay? So that's my scrap paper, that's my... Okay, so I used the kind of blue there for priming, so I'm just going to kind of mix up some blues here. I think I'll put the same colour in again. Couple of drops. I like when it goes like that. Try an orange. <laughs> Put some wee drops in there. Put up the red. Wow, look at that. The oils, the oil and the inks are kind of. Now, I'm just going to use a piece of white paper for this initial, for this initial print, but you can use any paper that's got an absorbent surface. Right, before we stir it, we're going to do one without stirring first, okay? So, this paper's quite thick, so just lay the paper in at one end there, and then just slowly lower the paper into the ink to try and avoid any air bubbles. And it's usually quite instant, it usually kind of... It's quite effective, quite instantly. Whoa. Whoa. The red's a wee bit thick there, run off there, but that's... Um, that's one lace there. I'll put that aside. Now, you'll also... With these inks, you can actually take a couple of prints, okay, um, off the same kind of batch that's in there. So I'm just going to take now what's probably called, I'll call it a ghost print, a second version. Again, I'm just lowering the paper in. Ah, it's starting to work a bit better now. Now you can see how much softer how much softer that is. The orange is a lot softer and the blue is a lot softer. Uh, we might actually get an interesting thumbprint print on there. This is what happens. Let's try a coloured piece of coloured paper. See what we can get on it. Yeah, try just lowering the paper in from one end 
and letting it roll up. If you drop it straight on, uh, you might get a, an air bubble underneath and that'll just come up as a white dot or, or something on your paper if you're using white paper and such. Uh, a bit hard to see that one, but I think when it dries it'll be quite subtle. Right, I think we'll try one now where we'll actually swirl up the ink. Okay, I'm going to try some yellow. I like yellow. Yellow, a wee bit of violet maybe. And a bit of turquoise, let's try that. I'm just going to go in now and just start breaking up the start breaking up these wee kind of blobs of ink. Right, let it settle. Settle pill. Okay. You don't want to immerse the water fully in it. Try and just keep the, just lay it on the surface. Ooh. Well, that's a beezer. That's a beezer. Take a wee bit of tool. Just take the dampness off that. Mm. So I've never changed the inks. The inks that are still in there are from that previous print there. Now let's just see what happens when I when I try this. Oh, it's uh, I like it. Wow. I think I sometimes prefer the softer prints to the, I don't know, it's just a personal thing. Now what I, what I would also recommend here, that paper, whenever you, whenever you damp, dampen paper or wet paper, just take a book, a book or a weight, it might even just be a, a bit of card with a weight and just, you know, Put that on there and just leave that probably, it should be dry the next day. Yeah. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, some more colours in here and I'm going to take, uh, here we have a, a poem, somebody's a poem, it's in, uh, Helen's poem. And it's a wonderful little uh, poem uh, about a day in spring. Something that goes well with green, and I kind of like yellow and green and sort of brown, so let's put a couple of spots of yellow in there. I'm going to put some yellow, some actual green. Yeah, let's try some sienna. Let's go and it's reacting. Let's give it a swirl up. It depends what colour your container is. It might be difficult to see what's happening on the surface there, but you have to trust that the inks that you've used are there. <laughs> uh, the yellow doesn't show up so well in the yellow here, so oh, there is it. But I know it's in there. What I'm going to do is I, th I think this will work better with the softer ghost print on the poem, so we can read the poem and it's got a softer background. Right, fingers crossed. Woo! Very nice. It's a really nice result, I think. And once again, if you want that to be, if you want that to dry nice and flat, 
put your towel across it and your, your book on top. Leave that for, yeah, two or three hours, maybe overnight, whatever. And in the morning or later on, it should dry nice and flat for you. Got a bit of a mixture going here. I'm just trying to break up these uh, sort of heavier dots of ink there into something a bit more. What I think I'll do is, I'll do two poems. I'll do one of them with a the strong, the strong ink, just to let's see what it looks like, and then one with the ghost image to see if it's... The poem kind of gets lost a wee bit in the, in the strength of that ink there. Now, did I have another one somewhere? There? I don't know. Depending on how thin or transparent your paper is, you'll see it taken right away, but if the, the paper's slightly thicker, it won't be that obvious, but it's usually quite kind of, quite instant. Wow, oh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Paper's a bit thin, so watch not tear it. Tiger. Yeah, okay folks, great stuff. So that is um, basically the, 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 the practical side of things. We just actually, actually produce in there these uh, wonderful, wonderful coloured marbled um, pieces of paper, which I'm sure you'll all have uh, tremendous fun with and experimenting. So here's a simple, two or three simple wee things that you can maybe just um, let your imagination on well with. You might just prefer something really simple and straightforward. This is just a series, a series of um, uh, prints that I've taken. I've just cut them all into the, the same size squares and just pasted them onto a black black background. Now this is I've cut some butterfly shapes from the uh, the, 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 the linked paper, and I've just stuck them on a stuck that on a black bit of card. So we've got the the stencils there. Then I've taken. The actual. I've taken what was the shape there and just <laughs> just applied them to here. Now this could be whatever you want, birds, anything you like. I just picked butterflies because I thought they were um, nice shapes and they kind of suited the they suited this dynamic of the the, the, the bright colours. Okay. I just had some real good fun just making up some real like sort of funky wee landscapes. Uh, quite simple. Doesn't have to look exactly like a landscape just gives you an idea you know I like these wee kind of moons that we can put up there um, a single tree a single moon a nice little bit of desert again the planet in the sky or you can alternatively just a straightforward straightforward wee set of hills a nice sky and that's just using the the, the um, just using the marbling paper, uh, just in a very effective, very simple way. You don't have to get too complicated with it, just to kind of create that nice wee landscape. Uh, and that's like an alternative to actually using the, the black paper. Okay, so um, yeah, just have some fun, great stuff. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, and once you get started, it's kind of hard to stop. So uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go and enjoy. Thank you. Yes.